Hey everyone, it's Riyadh from Right at Home Realty. Hello everyone, Will Ellis from Right at Home Realty. And I'm Kimberly Black with Video Resume Academy. Thanks, Kimberly. The first question is, and thanks for joining us. Uh, mm -hmm. Describe your business and what makes you stand out. Okay, so my business is Video Resume Academy, and I offer online courses and in-person training um, on video communication skills, how to use video to promote yourself to either employers or, or clients. Um, the course content that I've developed uh, stems from years of experience uh, with video marketing initiatives, uh, commercial acting experience, and from doing primary research with my uh, my master's thesis about the importance of developing video communication skills in preparation for video based job interviews. So oh. video resumes and video interviews, they've been around for a while, but in the last two years, as you can imagine, it's like in everyone's face, right? So applying for jobs now is uh, video. So what I've tried to create based on the outcomes of my thesis is um, how to use video to promote yourself. And we tend to be really shy, right? We stay in our comfort zone with video. We don't want to put ourselves out there, but trying to teach people how to how to have the courage to use video to share what you have to offer, uh, since that's the way, you know, to people receive information now it's through video so why not teach it and what makes me stand out okay i i don't know how to answer this question but what i can <laughs> say is that when it comes to to video uh, teaching video skills particularly in a, a school environment um, a lot of that isn't isn't done yet because you know, it was never a need, but with the pandemic and with uh, everyone being on Zoom, like it's a new Zoom culture, um, now it's like, now is the time to teach students, to teach um, anyone really how to use video to promote themselves. So what I'm offering is sort of, you know, been done by other people, but it's unique in that sense that we're, we're looking at trying to help people develop the skills they need for the, the modern marketing ways of doing things. So. Is this different than like if someone has a social media page and they do videos, et cetera, yeah. a personal page on a business, like their own personal page, are you then able to help them, I guess, with that aspect as well? Or is this completely separate? So really what I offer is teaching you how to create videos to share your ideas. Okay. So <laughs> Let's say um, you know you want to pitch an idea to your to your target audience using video. Okay, sometimes the difficulty is knowing where to start. What do I even say? So part of the one of the modules that I offer in in the course is uh, pitch ideas or or video script ideas. You know, using video marketing techniques, uh, uh, oral presentation techniques, storytelling techniques, you know, sometimes knowing what to say is tough, coming up with a communication plan, right? Um, and then also, I've tried to encapsulate most of what I know about creating videos, like how to shoot, your lighting, your sound, you know, what to put in your background. So some of the basic best practices. And then I also share how to edit video. So I I personally use Adobe Premiere Pro to edit my videos, but as you probably know, that's super complicated. So uh, in, in the, oh my God. And, and, um, and it's very frustrating and time consuming. So what I've done in one of the modules is done a step-by-step uh, -step tutorial of how to edit a video using your smartphone and the PowerDirector app. So I take you step-by-step -step how to add pictures, how to add text, how to, because it doesn't really have to be complicated, right? So, yeah, so it's applicable to job seekers, people who want to share their services or, or people that just want to share ideas using video. Awesome. You should, we should have interviewed you first. <laughs> 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 yes, critiquing is upon <laughs> you with this. <laughs> yeah. uh, so tell us more about where you're from and about your story. Um, okay, so... It's boring where I'm from because I was born and <laughs> raised in Toronto, um, actually in Etobicoke. So that's pretty much where I spent the, the first 
first part of my, well, my growing up years, I guess you could say. Um, and in terms of, of my story, I, I, this is a, like a business kind of thing. So I'll share the, the background of the business, the business story, but <clears throat> I, um, I went to university late in life. Like I didn't start university till I was 34 and I graduated wow. at the age of 40. Okay. And one of the reasons why I went, went back to school was because I really wanted some kind of stability or financial security. And I thought a degree would be my ticket to that. Well, <laughs> as you can probably relate or people in your audience, that's not how it goes. You can have three degrees and still be unemployed, right? So anyways, after I um, graduated university at the age of 40, I spent the next six years applying for jobs, applying for jobs, paying people to redo my resume. I'm like, what is wrong with me? I have the most experience, the most education I've ever had, and I can't get a job. What is wrong with me, right? You do that self-loathing. <laughs> so anyways, I said, okay, well, I was comfortable on camera because I had uh, commercial acting experience. So I thought, why not create a video resume? Let's see if that works, right? And it worked. I got a job because of my video resume. Uh, the person mm -hmm. that hired me they didn't even see my written resume. They saw the video first and, and they told the manager, hire her. And then when uh, my first day on that job, that uh, manager shared my video with the whole company and I, I didn't know, right? It was like, I walked in there like everyone's hello, hey, cool video. I'm like, oh my God. But it was, it was kind of <laughs> cute because, because people said, you know, have you ever thought of creating those for other people? And at the time I didn't, but I sure did then, you know, it put the idea in my head. So basically ever since then, um, I've been working on developing uh, vi video resumes as, as a, as a go-to marketing tool, a uh, job search tool, just like cover letters, resumes, and a LinkedIn profile. It's just another marketing tool, but it's taken a while to come around to this point. So that's the story of that. <laughs> Okay. Well, you know, and, and, you know, you and I talked before this whole, you know, this whole interview right now and, and your name is, is known in our community, you know, and for, you know, and, you know, and I know your B positive business came out of a tough situation. And I, I don't know if you want to go into a little bit about that, because your story, in my opinion, is, is such an incredible, insane yeah story and your fight and i follow and i followed it since you know the summer of 2020 i followed it wow and um and you know my wife and i and everyone all of our friends you know we're rooting for you and and i'm so glad that you're here today if you just give a bit of you know sort of what happened where you are and what came out of this that'd be amazing yeah sure i mean it was it was bizarre like even even to this day i scratch my head about the fact i'm here but the amount of support that, that I received, but um, for those who don't know, I, I was <laughs> July of 2020, quite literally, I had just submitted my master's thesis, like hit send. And I was like, thank God that's over with. And then, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, I like to go for walks. So I, I said to my husband one, uh, one summer evening, it wasn't dark out, just to let's make that perfectly clear. I said, I'm just going to go for a walk. I want to, you know, got cobwebs. And he said, okay, normally he walks with me. But at that time, he was he was online teaching. So I went on my own. And um, basically, I went for a walk, followed the same route. I, I always walked, and then woke up in the hospital three weeks later. So wow. literally, there's about a month of my life I don't remember. So what ended up happening um, was that uh, on my walk for probably three quarters of my walk, um, I was being followed and I was attacked and I don't know the details of it. And I'm not supposed to speculate about certain things because it's before the courts right now, right. but I, I was, I was attacked right by a patch of trees on Anderson there's um, a forested area there yep. and we passed it dozens of times. We never really paid much attention to it before. It's like on a busy residential road, right? But anyways, I guess um, I was dragged into that patch of trees and assaulted on many different levels. <laughs> um, I was beaten so badly that um, I, I ended up being put in a, a coma 
awaiting reconstructive jaw surgery. And um, I, they originally thought I had global brain damage, like brain dead, and uh, they waited uh, to see if my body would recuperate. So after, after a week, they did another brain scan. And for some reason, I had no brain damage. It was really bizarre. Even the doctors were like, we don't get it. <laughs> so anyways, they wow. went ahead with the surgery. And then a couple weeks later, I, I say I, that's when I woke up because I was twitching and coming to, but it was probably not until about two and a half, three weeks after I arrived at the hospital that I kind of became conscious of my surroundings. And that's when I discovered all of the incredible things that had taken place while I was lying there in a coma <laughs> in, in the hospital. But the, the be positive, um, when my husband, when I first was brought to the hospital, you know, the doctors asked tons of questions, you know, what's your wife, you know, what's she allergic to? Is she on any medication? What's her blood type? And he didn't know my blood type and it made him <clears throat> cry because he thought, oh my God, they need to know her blood type to give her life-saving blood transfusions. And I don't know her blood type. Anyways, it, did, it didn't matter. They, they got my blood type and they came back and said to him, just so you know, your, your wife's blood type is B positive. And then he said he got emotional yeah. again because he was like, well, of course it is. What else could it be, be <clears throat> but B positive? So he ended up writing, writing a song uh, and releasing a song called B positive. So it was kind wow. of, um, kind of a, a nice, a nice story, but that became the theme of, of a lot of my uh, messaging over the past year and a half and, and continue going forward that, um, you know, sometimes you get the snot kicked out of you, um, but you can be okay. And, and life can go on and it's, being solution oriented and future focused, you know, so that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. So we're waiting for the outcomes. Uh, the preliminary hearing starts in February. Wow. Um, and, and we'll see, I mean, I don't know, cause that's the preliminary, that's not the, <laughs> the final. So we just, we still have to wait and, and kind of continue with our life while waiting for the impending, uh, case. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. Wow. Well, no, it's an amazing story. And, and I guess, and again, when you saw those messages when you came to, um, were you, I mean, was, were you amazed by the outpouring of community support? 